Kia ora, good evening. A rise in construction activity has boosted GDP growth with large rises in residential and non-residential building. The gross domestic product rose 1% in the March quarter with construction responsible for two-thirds of that growth. It's the third consecutive quarter where GDP has grown by 1% or more and to the year ended March growth was 3.3%. Spending by New Zealand households was flat while spending by tourists increased 7.7% driving an increase in exports and travel services. The size of the economy in current prices was $227 billion for the year ended March. The Vulnerable Children's Bill was passed into law last night ensuring New Zealand's most at-risk children get priority access to services and support. The legislation holds the heads of five government departments directly responsible for improving the lives of vulnerable children. It also introduces new vetting and screening checks for government and community agency staff working with children, including banning people with serious convictions from working in core children workforce roles. The onus will now be on parents who have killed or severely abused or neglected a child, requiring them to prove they are safe to parent subsequent children. This week is World Elder Abuse Week and Southland's Coordinator for Elder Abuse and Neglect Prevention, who's been in the role for 11 years, says in the last two years referrals have doubled. Elder abuse now deals with around 200 cases each year in Southland. Margot Sutherland asked, asked about the main forms of abuse being reported within the region. Financial, psychological um, and physical still a little bit of sexual abuse going on but yeah. So the financial abuse this is where you might have an adult child living at home uh, with, with a, a parent who uh, is on a very low income perhaps and the adult child is not working but they are not contributing to the running of the household? Yeah that sort of thing it was quite it's quite high in the community especially when one partner passes away and the other partners left and they crumble under the pressure, so they'll, they'll let them come back home and live rent free, um, trying to help them out. And they say they're looking for work, but they don't look for work and don't actively seek work. So, would they be considering that perhaps the assets would be dwindled away if the parent went into care, and, and there's a loss of income for them in the future? Yeah, there's a lot of that about um, people keeping their parents at home um, because of the assets. We try to. Um, talk to the families, tell them what, you know, there's, there's a level to go into care. They have to reach that criteria health-wise to go into care and financially-wise, and that's dealt with through work and income. Um, if the person needs care, they need to be in there, not sitting in a, a home locked in with someone going in three times a day. If, if you're an adult child and you weren't spending time visiting an elderly parent, is that seen as neglect also or abuse? It depends on the situation. We've got a lot of um, older people in Invercargill who their children live out of town. They, li they only come back for the breaks and Christmases and that. We live in a really global society now. Most families are supportive of the parents. They are, they're ringing up if they can't visit. You, we deal with the worst end of the market. We don't deal with the ones that are really good and being looked after and have the family members coming in. So there is still a lot of that happening, but we're only dealing with the abused ones. Every abuse case has an effect. And, and the person, it emotionally affects them and it's going to be with them for a long time. It doesn't matter if it's financial or sexual. If you lose trust in someone, if you lose um, the faith to believe in a family member, it's really hurting. So, yeah, I don't, there's a no easy one. We can support a person. We can, um, a lot of our work, we can go in and we can make a difference. We can make a change within six months. It could be two years. It could be four years. But it's persevering, being with, beside that person so that when they can make that decision, we can go in and support them and it can be sorted. What have you been doing this week to raise awareness? Well this week we had John Parsons, he's been here and we did an expo on Tuesday and it started at 10 o'clock and went till 2 and we provided a free lunch and he worked, talked about um, scams, internet safety, internet banking, how to keep yourself safe. And we thought it would it would go quite well. We had a full hall. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed it. And there was lots of questions and lots of... Um, the people were really onto using emails and things like that. They knew exactly what they were talking about with their questions. The average age would have been about 70. It was really good to see everybody get so much back out of it. 
Labour Minister Simon Bridges today sent a clear message to adventure tourism operators during an address to the Tourism Association. Mr Bridges says the resources are in place to complete audit safety checks before November and it's up to the industry to ensure it has world-class safety standards. Mr Bridges reaffirmed the government's commitment to professionalising the adventure activities sector and lifting safety standards across the board. WorkSafe New Zealand has employed safety advisors offering one-on-one -on -one support to operators and this week announced financial support of up to $1,500 per operator for businesses that sign up to audits with recognised safety audit providers by the 31st of July. The Minister says the government is doing its bit, its bit. It's now up to the industry to play its part. After the break, with three months of campaigning ahead, we catch up with both the main party candidates contesting the seat of Invercargill after a week of interesting poll results, and we have the week that was. Welcome back to South Today News. Three months from today, the country will be going to the polls to decide whether there will be a national or Labour-led government. Current polling has national streaks ahead and able to govern alone with around 70 seats in the next parliament. Labour, on the other hand, are polling lower than most can remember in the MMP environment. I went out to find out how each major party's candidate for the seat of Invercargill was faring with three hard months of campaigning and media scrutiny ahead. First up, Nationals Invercargill candidate Sarah Dowie today visiting Southland Enterprises Recycling Unit. Really enjoying getting out and meeting people, hearing about their views as to policy and what they think is important for the electorate, so enjoying it. A lot of candidates say you don't really know until you have been out on the trail a while. Has there been, uh, has there been an eye-opening experience for you? Well, I thought actually that I knew this electorate quite well, but after campaigning and getting out and meeting people, I guess I'm only scratching the surface, but I'm enjoying hearing everybody's views. Uh, and I think that's what makes a good politician, is if you're prepared to listen, so and that's what I've been doing. And today also a special occasion, it would be nice to be up there presenting those certificates. Yeah, this is a fantastic organisation and I can't wait to get out and have a look at what's going on. But these uh, people have a real sense of fulfilment uh, coming here to work and enjoying the camaraderie and the friends that they make uh, while they're here, they're here. Let's talk about some polls nationally. I know the key one is here in the electorate on the 20th of September, but um, outstanding results really for national. 56% able to govern alone. Who cares what's happening with ACT or the Conservatives? Able to govern alone. Amazing. Well, it's an encouraging result, but look, I think that nobody expects us to do that well in an MMP environment. So our challenge is mobilising our voters to get out there on the 20th of September and vote, because we simply can't be complacent. What do you put the popularity of this national government down to? You know John Key. Is it all about John Key, or is it about the people behind him? Well, John Key is a, a special leader. I mean, he's genuine and he's a fantastic person. But I I think these polls show that New Zealanders have confidence in this national government. Uh, we're leading the country well, we're getting debt down, we're strengthening the economy and we're supporting families. So that's a moderate government that's getting results. We'll be checking up with you of course in the next three months and things will get more and more intense. What will you be doing? What is the plan? Are we going to see some billboards and things going up? Yeah, absolutely. We'll have hoardings going up. Um, we have to obviously comply with uh, local bylaws when those go up, so we'll be doing that. Um, we'll be getting out and about to more organisations, meeting people and just grassroots stuff, getting out to the rugby, getting out to the netball, uh, meeting and greeting people and again listening to their views because I think that's really important to help shape my uh, perspective of this electorate. Later I asked Labour's Invercargill candidate Leslie Soper how her campaign was going three months out and whether recent Labour low polling results and growing speculation about the leadership of David Cunliffe was proving a distraction. We're really active in Invercargill, we're up there door knocking, telephone canvassing, getting the Labour message out. There's a feeling out there very strong that people want to change. I've just been talking to Sarah Dowie and she said there's a feeling out there that they don't want to change. Uh, are both of you just saying what the party, what you feel should be said? No, I'm saying what's on the ground and what I'm hearing from people when we're doing that active stuff out in the community. Very, but very strongly. What are the key issues? What, what feedback are you getting within the electorate? Key issues are jobs, economic uncertainty, 
people feeling that the cost of living has just spiralled out of control and that the government's a big part of that. Housing has become a very big issue in Invercargill. The mm. old cold houses and the government or the, the, the encouragement to the reserve bank on the loan to value ratios that's meant new home buyers, first timers in particular, are being locked out of the market. So there's a lot of concerns about the things that people care about. Health and education are also really biggies, where there's a feeling that National has lost control of those issues. Let's talk about the polls, because we really can't avoid them. A, a, a quite damning poll this week, 23% uh, for Labor. That's, uh, that's, we're talking about key constituency seats being lost there, aren't we, with those figures? Not necessarily, because I've, I don't have a lot of faith in New Zealand polls. They are only polling landlines. Hundreds and thousands of people in New Zealand no longer have landlines, they have cell phones, often prepaid cell phones. So to me, the polls in New Zealand have become very skewed. I don't get distracted by them, and I never have. I think the only poll that is really important is the one where you're talking to people on the street and the poll actually on election day. And what people are saying to me is, this is all distracting. The fact is, we know that National was only government by one seat, and they haven't got banks any longer, so they don't have that one seat. They're not a legitimate government again. As far as I'm concerned, it's right down to the wire. Let's talk about David Cunliffe as leader since late last year. He hasn't turned things around, and his popularity is, in fact, 11%. What are your thoughts on his leadership heading into these last three months into the election? David is someone I rate very highly and always have. He's someone I've worked with. He's a, he's a very, very good operator. He's a great leader and he's going to make a great Prime Minister. As I say, distraction and smear campaigns just don't work. New Zealanders are brighter than that. The fact is this is a down-to-the-wire election. The choice is between a Labour government that's active with someone like David Cunliffe as Prime Minister and a national government that people see as bankrupt and only being there for the already well-off. And that's all from the news desk. Next in the sport, a preview of the forthcoming All Black Test. Now we'll leave you with the week that was. Have a great weekend.